Bonjour. Welcome to another edition of Café de René. I am the Fed Will today. James Thompson joined once again by the Star Show. Mr. René Dupree. René, you brought another great guest today. Yes, indeed. This week is the other half of the infamous tag team, The Dicks. <laughs> he is, I believe, the bigger dick. I mean that in a physical sense, not in a personality sense. John Tank Tolan, what's going on? <laughs> I'll agree with you. Maybe on both accounts, who knows? Um, <laughs> no, nah, not really, though. But uh, no, not much, man. Just enjoying. Thanks for having me on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Uh, you guys are doing an awesome job. And, uh, and I think uh, think uh, it's really cool to just be a part of this. So thank you for having me on. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So, I first met Tank in OBW. I believe you were a non non contract, right? You just went there to chase the dream, right? Yeah, uh, I I originally started the Monster Factory in Jersey, okay, um, with a uh, pretty boy Larry Sharp's Monster Factory, and kicked around the Indies for a little bit. Worked with uh, Nova's brother, uh, or Simon Dean's brother, uh, uh, Donnie, Donnie B, for his his outfit, uh, and then promotion to a couple other ones. Uh, you know just here and there around traveling all around doing that. And then uh, after a little bit of time, I got lucky enough to, they had the OVW first tryout for coming to OVW and uh, trying out to see if, you know, maybe eventually you can get a developmental contract. So they did a invite and they took like 50 people. Uh, it was a week long, uh, like a week long camp, I guess you could say. And it, it was uh, Tom Pritchard was, was there, uh, you know, leading the thing with uh, Jimmy and Danny and uh, some of the other guys. And, and uh, they're just kind of viewing the talent and people like myself, uh, who else came from that class? Uh, Chad, uh, the, you know, the beast. Yeah. Rest in peace, my man. Um, uh, who else? Uh, Jillian, uh, Mike Mondo came from that class. Uh, you know, the, some, some good, some good guys came from that class. And uh, we were just fortunate enough uh, to to get that chance, and uh, so we did that week. And I went home, back to Jersey, wrestled around a little bit more. And sure enough, a couple months later, uh, I got a call from Jim Cornette saying, "Hey, Tank, we 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 like what we saw, and we want to give you the chance to come out here and work towards a developmental contract." And I said, "He said, how soon can you be there?" I said, "How soon can you have me?" <laughs> so that was pretty much it. And so. Uh, I remember I moved there on May 3rd, 2003. I'll never forget it. It was Derby weekend and it was great to get out there and everyone just took me right in. Like it was awesome. Really yeah, awesome. OVW was more welcoming than say like the main roster, right? Really? You think so? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. OVW, man. I, I mean, I will never, I could never speak highly enough of what, OVW was uh, to me. It was it was really a second family. I mean, everyone from from Jimmy and Danny, you know, right on down, uh, Rip, of course, and uh, everyone. You know, they're all just family, man. Uh, you know, and all all of them characters in one way or another. You know, right. yeah, yeah, definitely. So so tell me, like, you got signed in 03. Uh, did they put you and Chad automatically together, or what? What was your role down there at first? No, when I when I first got there, um, I remember I, I got it was my first I got there on the weekend and that first Wednesday taping, they gave me a dark match just to see how I would do. And they put me against uh, another Jersey guy who had just gotten up there uh, named Ben Woods. He was part of like the Jersey crew. And uh, we just did a dark match and they they, uh, they they liked the match. So the very next week, I my first actual TV match was uh, against Doug Basham for the championship. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just, you know, it was a, just a way to, you know, give me a little bit of rub and give him another win. And, and that's cool. But it was awesome because I got I got the opportunity to wrestle on TV. And and uh, Doug was, you know, gracious enough to to give me a decent amount of, uh, you know, shine in the ring, which was awesome. And uh, and, it, you know, it was just the start of something great. And uh, the very next match was uh, Orton. I wrestled Orton because he was coming back after uh, getting injured. And so he did a match there and he's in an angle with Matt Morgan at the time. So uh, I was in there with him and, and he said, Hey, you know, uh, you know, the, you know, DDP, how he does the diamond cutter. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, he's like, well, you know, since he's not with the company anymore, I wouldn't mind using that tonight if you don't mind as my you know finisher. And I said, yeah, no, not at all. Of course. 
And so, uh, so sure enough, he hit it on me twice that night, uh, you know, and he brought out Matt Morgan, blah, blah, blah. But so, yeah, I was the first guy to ever take his RKO. Wow. wow. Was, yeah, it was wow. kind of funny. Fair, yeah. Fair. But, uh, but to, to, to get to the whole point of the, uh, how it all came to be, um, Mike, Mike Bucci Nova, he was with uh, Chris Cage at the time in a tag team called Adrenaline. And uh, he injured his knee and, had, and he was out for a while. He had that surgery. So they said, hey, you know, he's a Jersey guy. I wrestled for his brother. And Jim Cornette said, hey, it would be great just to make an angle. Like, this is your boy from Jersey. He's going to step in and take your place in the meantime. And uh, so, that nice. Sorry, Siri. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, so yeah, so I, I got tagged up with, uh, with uh, Cage and we we're the new Adrenaline. And uh, next, the, I think it was the very next week we wrestled uh, Lance Cade and and who uh, who was he work tagging with? It was part of the Bolin's Bolin's crew. I can't remember who he's with. Uh, O'Hare maybe. Who was it? Sean O'Hare maybe. Uh, it it might have been. It might have been. Yeah, I think it might have been. And they were the tag champs, and, the, and we were at Six Flags Kentucky Kingdom. So my my first match with Cage as a tag team in Adrenaline, we won the tag titles, and and from there on, it was just off the races. Wow. Yeah, I was just really fortunate. I mean, Jim Cornette really. Uh, really looked out for me, really saw something, I guess. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate everything, you know, the opportunities I had, because not everyone was able to get that opportunity uh, as easily as I was. So very thankful. Uh, you called yourself tank because you were built like a tank, dude. Jesus Christ, you were <laughs> wider than you were tall. Yeah, that's that's what Jimmy would always say. He's like, hey, that was one of the sayings, yep. Yeah. He's as wide as he is tall. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I grew up and I knew, I, you know, looking at my mom and dad, I knew I knew I wasn't going to be tall. So I had to be as wide as possible. So right. that was yeah, that right. was that. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when did the whole thing with you and Chad come to be? Was it one of the writers come down and say, OK, we want you as a tag team? How'd that work out? Well, you know, Chad. You know, Chad was doing his thing, you know, traveling all over, you know, you, I, I've, obviously you interviewed him, you know, his story and uh, yeah. it really worked. I, I can't take anything away from that, that guy. He really hustled. He wanted yeah. it and yeah. uh, all the respect in the world for him for, for doing what he did, you know, going wherever he had to go to, to, to and, and make shit happen. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it, I was wrestling with Cage and things were great. We we're, you know, battling back and forth with, uh, you know, Nova and Aaron Stevens, Jersey Shore crew and uh, Disciples of Sin with, with uh, Seven and uh, Thomas, Ty, uh, Tomko rather, Travis yeah, Tomko, yeah. And, you know, a bunch of other, you know, a bunch of other, uh, you know, things. We were just baby faces the whole time. And, and when Chad came and he got signed, uh, you know, obviously we know the deal. I mean, we, we look similar when it comes to the, to the build and look and, and so uh, Jimmy thought, hey, you know, maybe this is a time to kind of turn turn uh, one of you guys heel, you know, between me and Cage, or Cage and I. So uh, that was kind of the start of it. And uh, so uh, it was it started slowly, where he just kind of started wedging his way in as my as my cousin, and uh, kind of put a wedge between us as a as a team. And then next thing you know, I turn on Cage, and uh, it wasn't long after that actually that uh, that. I partially tore my bicep. So, yeah, yeah. So I was, I was throwing punches on cage, you know, when it first turned on him and I felt something kind of snap a little bit, but, but it wasn't a complete tear. And it just felt like I thought maybe it was just a muscle, muscle uh, strain or something. So over the next three weeks I wrestled with, and I kept feeling it ting, ting, ting. And it was like slowly tearing more and more. And so finally, uh, there was one one match where I had to attack him from behind and hit him over the back of the chair. So as uh, I came out of the curtain, I hit him from behind with the chair. I just felt the whole thing just snap, and uh, just, my, it rolled right up my arm. Up, and, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's uh, it was it was not fun, but you know, I I finished a little bit that we had to do, of course. And uh, and then. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to just keep trying to wrestle because I, I was scared to get surgery and lose my contract by that point because I had already been signed. Yeah. And, uh, and sure enough, Stephanie and, and all the people for the writers and, 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 and uh, they all came down and they were, you know how they come down once in a while and check us all out. I wasn't sure if they did it while you were there. Um, but uh, they came down there watching us and I, I did a promo and I did a match and, 
And Tommy Dreamer actually was uh, kind of filling the Tom Pritchard shoes at that time. And uh, he said, and I had a really good match. And he said, Tank, and this was back in the locker room. I was getting a drink from the fountain. And he goes, Tank, I got, I got good news and bad news. And he said, uh, Stephanie really liked what you did. And she actually wants to bring you up right away. And, awesome. and I said, I said, I was like, so stoked, you know. And he goes, the bad news is I told her that you have a torn bicep and you have to get surgery. Yeah. And I was gonna, I was just gonna say, you know, I'll just <laughs> I'll just go for it, man, you know, and, and just deal with what I gotta deal with. But in retrospect, smart to get the surgery. Yeah. But uh, but you know, things might have played out a little differently if I hadn't. But uh, but Stephanie came back and she said, Tank, I you know, you you know, I re I really thought you did a great job. Go get your surgery, don't worry, nothing's gonna happen to you. We'll still have a spot for you when you come back and we'll get you up there. I said, thank you so much, and I really appreciate that. Yeah. So so I had, I got my surgery and uh, during that time, that's when they said, okay, we're just going to put these guys together. They're going to be the Tolans. Uh, and, you know, Chad had blonde hair. So the office said, you know, let's get Tank. We'll make him have blonde hair. So next thing you know, they're calling us the blonde bombers. And uh, right. yeah. And then one thing led to another. We eventually got, you know, called up. Uh, but we were supposed to be called up as uh, Simon Dean's little henchman. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah, which ended up being the Gemini twins. If you get, if you right. remember, right, yeah. right. So, when they first brought us up, we were going to be uh Simon Dean's boys, you know, his, his henchmen. And uh, so they were giving us some dark, they gave us like a dark match or two just to you know see how we'd do. And then, um, they said, you know, let's let's have them just start coming out from the crowd. And uh, this was on SmackDown. And we'll just, at the end of a tag match, we'll, they'll just come out and whoever they won, they'll just come in and lay them out. So mm -hmm. that's what we started doing. We'd come in from the crowd and we'd lay, laid out like, you know, the Mexicals or, or whoever else was out there at the time. And, uh, and so we'd come out in black slacks and black tank tops. So we ran in there and uh, I just remember after one night, I rolled in there, took people out, and then I had tag top on, so I did the old, you know, Hulk Hogan, you know, I'm not, not trying to be Hulk Hogan, but just, you know, yeah, yeah. and, uh, you know, just all full of, you know, piss and vinegar, and, uh, and when we came back, Vince was, you know, back there, and he goes, you know, I, 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 I really liked it, how you, how you look, how you, you got the black slacks and the, the black tag top, and you just ripped it off like you were chipping down, I, I really loved it, and he goes, that's a great Vince impression, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> like him. Oh, thanks, man. Um, but anyway, so he was just like, you know, you, you know, I like the way you look. And, and um, he goes, next week, I want you to come back and come back to, with Chippendale outfits. I want you to, I want to see how it looks. <laughs> and so sure enough, you know, we went to our seamstress and we said, hey, we need these. We need these for next week. So she made quick, like, you know, and I said, everything has to be tear away. So she made tear off pants and and you know the bow ties and cuff links and all that stuff and we came back and we showed vince backstage and he's like i love it and uh so that was just you know that was the start of it and um but at the time we were still just running out and doing our, our thing and we screwed up like one of the tag matches where we had we pushed animal off the top rope with him and heidenreich and uh made them lose to eminem so that kind of got us into a little thing with them um <laughs> But uh, Stephanie, in the meantime, Stephanie's, and they called us actually one night, Taz, Taz said, they, were, they kept saying, we don't know who these guys are. And one night he goes, I know who they are, they're the Tolans, right? So they, he goes, that's Tank Tolan, that's the Tolans. And, uh, but that eventually, of course, never stuck. But, um, but yeah, so Stephanie said, hey, so since you guys are gonna be doing this gimmick, um, I'll come up with a wrestling name that's kind of Chippendale, but, but but sexy, but, you know, wrestling. And I was, I was like, all right. So next week we thought about it and we all talked and talked to, to uh, Mike, my uh, Simon Dean, you know, whatever you want to call him, um, Mike. And uh, we were all thinking, and, and we came up with like, what about the weapons of mass seduction? We we're like, that would be like a cool name, you know, instead of weapons of mass destruction. So we we're like, yeah, that's great. Let's tell Stephanie. So we're like, Stephanie, we want to be called the weapons of mass seduction. She's like, I love it. That's great. And out of the corner of my ear, because we're out by the ring when everyone's training and stuff. And uh, yeah, yeah, I hear, why don't we call them the swinging Richards? <laughs> and and um, Michael Hayes. That was, what's that? Michael Hayes. 
You goddamn right, Michael Hayes. Yeah. yeah. So, so Michael Hayes said, said, yeah. He goes, I'm gonna go tell Vince right now, and I was like, I I Jesus, you interrupted me. <laughs> anyway, rude. Uh, so, uh, so sure enough, I look at Stephanie. She's like, don't worry, I'll handle this. And uh, and so I'm like, oh my god. I was like, we're gonna be called the Swinging Richards. And uh, so sure enough, it's like now. 10 minutes before, uh, you know, we're going out for our match dress, you know, now is our gimmick. We're going out as Chippendales. And uh, she comes up to me and Chad and she says, all right, so um, you guys aren't going to be the swinging Richards. It was too close to Stevie Richards. Uh, so they were going to then call you the swinging dicks. But that's just <laughs> too, <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's on the nose. <laughs> too on the nose, right? <laughs> and so she goes, so we're just, they're just going to call you the dicks. And uh, I just was kind of like, yep. Okay. Wah, wah. Wah, wah, indeed. But, you know, at the same time, you, you know, you know how it is, you know, especially up there, you just like, they're signing my check. I'm going to do That's whatever it. I have to do, you know? That's it. Yeah. So, uh, so she's like, yeah, and you'll be Chad Dick and, and you'll be James Dick. And I was like, all right, I guess I'm James Dick. And, um, it, and, and I was like, why can't I be Tank Dick? At least that's a fucking Tank Dick. Right, like a big dick, yeah. <laughs> right, and so I said, so I was like, so can we at least spell it like D-I-X? And she's like, no, nah, they want to spell it D-I-C-K-S. And I was like, all right. I was like, that's <laughs> what we're going to do. And I, it's like, you can hear Jim Ross out of the corner of my ears going, huh, oh, sorry about your luck. That's got a limited yeah. shelf life, you know? Right. And I'm like, right. oh, the fuck. Yeah, so that was the beginning of the dicks, and I thought, shit, my mom's gonna be proud. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so now at this point, did you and uh, Chad get along? Because I know Chad was very positive person, but oh, yeah. being that positive and his personality and that, especially that SmackDown fucking locker room, because I've been there, that wouldn't gel well. And obviously it didn't. He rubbed people the wrong way, didn't he? Yeah, you know, and including myself. And, and it's like, I, I feel, I felt bad, you know, being mad at him or being angry. But it's like, I felt like, you know, when you, and, and you, you've been in a tag team, I just, you know, tag team, like, like you feel like part of your career rides on your partner, you yep. know? So you're like, you're like, pardon my French, but motherfucker, don't screw this up for me, you know? Yeah. And uh, and it's just like, he was such a pos is such a positive person, but um, it was almost to the point where it was um, not yeah, genuine. Yeah. It, even if it was genuine from him, it would come off to other people like it's in, in, in genuine and like, that's kind of fake and you're up to something or you're, you're a shady little snake or something like that, you know? And so right. we come off that way sometimes. And, uh, and yeah, it was from the start. I mean, even in OVW, I mean, we kind of didn't click right away. I mean, it was tough. It was tough clicking um, to be quite honest. I mean, I, I, I just wrestled with cage and he's so laid back and awesome. And by the way, congratulations to him. Cause he's he, they're, they're him and his wife are pregnant, which is awesome. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, I just I just saw it. I don't go on social media that much, but I just saw it. So I gotta give him a call. But you know, so congratulations to him. I'm so, so happy for him. But um, but yeah, it was really tough with with uh with Chad because um he we would all be trying to plan stuff out and and sometimes he wouldn't want to go with the flow or he'd want to throw his own stuff in there that kind of didn't always necessarily makes sense from a psychology standpoint or something but at the same time you want to try and still let him have his his say in things so it kind of made things difficult um but it, it is what it is so the frustration really came from my side i think in the beginning and then he got probably frustrated with me too which i can't say i blame him and uh, i listened to his interview and you know i think he said he he felt like there was some animosity from me which you know I'm not going to say there wasn't because I, I was really just, I was like my whole career, you know, could be on the line because of, you know, the wrong, if wrong moves are made, you know, and, uh, and at the same time, so he was so overly happy that he almost made me look like, you know, like I was a miserable person. So, right. so, <laughs> so then, 
Yeah, go ahead. He, he, he was telling us stories about the, the, the hazing that went on and stuff. And so were you, did you see that personally? Were you involved? Like, were you like, um, did you get hazed yourself going in there? Or like, tell me some stories, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, well, shoot. I mean, I remember the first time I was ever hazed was actually an OVW um, when uh, I'll, t- I'll give you a guess who was probably there. Um, it was uh, Bradshaw and uh, it was Bradshaw and uh, Farouk and uh, and they were there. And, and, and uh, we were I remember we were doing a show and uh, we had to ride back. They made us ride back in the back of the ring truck. And uh, while they were, and it was, it was pretty chilly out, man. It was pretty cold. And, and it was, I mean, it was, I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt. It was, you know, if, if you were in a car, you were comfortable, but in the right. back, you know, back and you're heading down the highway at, you know, in the middle of the night and it's cold out. And in the meantime, they're pouring jugs of water out onto us and everything like that. And yeah, it is what it is, man. You know, so I just, and I laughed it off. I just, I always, I always laughed things off. I never put it over. I never like made it seem like it bothered me at all. So that was the first time. And then uh, it was pretty much, I think, due to um, Chad, uh, a couple of other things that happened. Uh, I, when we were in, I forget where we were. I think it might've been, God, it might've been, it was one of the overseas. It might've been England, I think it was. Uh, I, you know, I went out to the ring, did my match, came back. I was like, where's my, where's my, where's my gear bag, you know? And uh, I couldn't find it. And uh I heard the shower running. So go back to the shower. My gear bag's wide open. All my stuff's in there, right? All, all my, you know, stuff. So I, so I wheel it out. I wheel it out, put on all my clothes. And then I just wheeled. And I, I pretend like, it, like nothing. And I just wheeled out my bag, zipped up my bag with all the water in it. And I wheeled it out. And you could just see the water pouring out as I'm pulling it to the, to the tour bus. And uh, so that was one. And then the next night, I remember I, came back from the ring and I was like, where the hell are my clothes? And uh, so I'm looking around and then I look up on the wall, they're glued to the wall. They're just glued to the wall. So I was like, right, that's a good one. That's a good one. So didn't put it over though. I took the clothes off the wall. I put them on all sticky and gluey and all that stuff. And I sat down in the chair and watched the, the rest of the matches like, like nothing. And I remember even at one point I, I got up and I pretend to hold on to the chair like it was stuck to me and walking around for a minute, just to, just to you know, just to, you know, walk around. And the guys, some of the guys laughed. And I remember the next night, Benoit pulled me out and, uh, and he pulled me to the side. And he said, hey, look, man, um, you really took, you know, you took, you know, everybody's, you know, fucking with you pretty good. We don't want to fuck with you anymore. I said, I said, oh, I, thanks, man. I appreciate that. He goes, they, they, they're, they're coming around to you, so you're all right. And I was like, all right, thank you. And that, that was kind of that. But um, so after that, they stopped. But uh, Chad, uh, now that our gimmick was the dicks, um, he decided before one of our shows, I mean, one of our tours, that he was gonna, you know, learn how to Chippendale dance better. So. <clears throat> Because, you know, they said, hey, you know, try, try and be a little bit more Chippendale-ish and stuff. And so he went out and he, I guess he either met a guy uh, or um, knew a guy who was, uh, I guess, maybe a dancer. I don't know. And uh, he's like, Tank, uh, I'm going to go over to this guy's house. Let's go over. He's going to teach us how to sexy dance like a Chippendale. And uh, he, he's like, we'll go over there. We'll just we'll dance and we'll learn. And uh, I was like. I was like, I don't know, it just kind of feels feels a little odd to me. He goes, yeah, come on, man, he's really cool. His, his name's Yanni, he's really cool. And I was, like, I, was like, I, was like, mm, I was like, I don't know, man. And so he went over by himself, danced till like four o'clock in the morning, uh, the day before we had to leave. And he goes, Tank, man, I, I got, let me show you, let me show you. And he, he video record, re- recorded everything, right? I was like, how late were you up with this guy, like dancing? He goes, oh man, we were up all night dancing. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, what? And I'm like, he's like, yeah, man. We, he's like, you got to look. You got to watch. And he shows me. And he shows me just him and this guy, like, dancing. And I'm like, it, it would look, look kind of strange to me. I'm not. And, and look, you know, 
it is what it is, but it just looks strange to me. Yeah. And I, but to kind of strange where if someone else sees it, the boys see it. Yes. The, the up there boys see it, you know, um, the vets, they're going to look at that and they are going to tear his ass up. And so I looked at it and this, he showed me in the airport and I said, Chad, I said, I said, put that away right now. I said, don't let anyone see that shit. I said, yeah. if anyone sees that, it's, it's over. It's over. Yeah. Okay. 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 I won't, I won't. So sure enough, we get on the plane, we go overseas. Our first match, we're in the locker room. And uh, I guess he showed, uh, I guess he showed one of the boys, one of the, one of the lower, you know, not, not the top guys, but of course it works its way up real quick. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. We, yeah, of course, you know how it goes. So yeah. it went right to boom, 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 right up to Taker. Oh. You know? Yeah, right up to Taker. And uh, and I, I was st standing right there and he looks at it. He's looking on the camcorder and he looks at it and he just goes. <laughs> and just walks away, and right. just walks away. And I'm like, mother well, I said, oh, this is not going to bode well. Right. So, um, and that was it. That was it. And, uh, and, and obviously, I think he had already gotten some heat from some of the other guys. Like, you know, like I, I think, you know, he even said, I think he might have had a little heat from Bradshaw or something like that, which I wasn't. <laughs> Go ahead. How long after Taker seen this video with the Chippendale dancing that you guys were done? Uh, it, it was like, I think. It, I think it might have even been that night that wow. like, yeah, it was like, it might've been that night. It was, uh, yeah, it was our trip to Mexico, uh, our tour to Mexico. Uh, it was either that night or the next. Um, I remember we did a show and uh, I was, I remember I was just getting, trying to just sneak back to the room, stay under the radar. I always just tried to stay under the radar. Yeah. And, and sure enough, um, uh, I get, called down you know, ring ring i'm like hello yeah come on down we're, we're uh, down we're come on down you your your presence is requested right in the, in the private catering you know we'd always have our little private catering area and so i get down there and i'll never forget and it was a, it was a big circular table and uh you know we're talking we're talking you know uh taker and uh, i think hardcore holly might have been there orton was there uh, I think Chavo was there, uh, Orlando, um, uh, Bradshaw was there. There's there there a bunch of boys there. Um, some, you know, some of the bigger name guys. And, uh, and as soon as I walk in, the first thing they say is, I remember Bradshaw said, hey, Tank, <laughs> welcome to Wrestler's Court. And I was like, oh, my uh, you gotta be shitting me. I'm like, you know, cause you hear about wrestlers court and, and, you know, like, and, and takers like judge jury executioner and there's one seat open and it's right next to, to taker. Right. And I'm like, son of a bitch. And I know what, what's going to happen. They're going to try and make me drink my face off. Right. It, especially if I don't want to. Right. So, um, so instead of saying, say, no, no, I'm good. I was like, I, I said, mind if I have a beer? And he's like, yeah, sure, here. And so I sat down, I sat down right there. And, and the first thing they said to me was, Tank, if Chad wants to, you know, become a better wrestler and make your gimmick better by going and learning how to dance with a guy in the middle of the night, why wouldn't you want to do that? And I thought to myself, son of a bitch, I'm being thrown under the bus and for not trying to make my tag team a better tag team, you know? <laughs> and, and, you know, I want to get better as a wrestler and as well as, you know, the gimmick, but, and, but I sat there and thinking, Mother, I was like, I'm about to get roasted. And uh, of course I'm shitting myself because I'm a new guy. Yeah. And so um, I sat there for a minute and I said, <sighs> I said, guy, I said, to be quite honest, guys, I just, I just felt like it was kind of gay. <laughs> That's be honest. Said. 
And hey, look, I, I don't care who's gay, straight, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. I, you know, as long as I'm happy in my life, it's whatever. And, and you guys do your things, whatever. But that's how I felt. And yeah. I didn't want to be involved in something that made me feel uncomfortable. You know, dancing with the guys, the guy in the middle of the night is kind of weird to me. And so I said, I, I feel like it's kind of gay. And they just, they just, there was like almost a pause for like, what felt to me like an eternity, but it must've probably only been a second or two. And they go, you're goddamn right, Chad, admit you're a fucking faggot. You know, that kind of Whoa. shit. You know, throwing out the words, you know, like, you know, and, 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 and Chad's like, I'm not gay, I'm not gay, I'm not, I swear I'm not gay. And like, I mean, it was, I mean, I, it, it went from like, all of a sudden thinking I'm going to get just destroyed to then just pit bull onto, onto Chad. I mean, and I just thought to myself, oh my God, I said, they're going to kill him. And, uh, and I felt, I felt bad for the guy, you know, because I, but at the same time, I said to myself, damn it, Chad, I told you, don't, don't do something show, stupid. Show, don't show anybody. Show, because you know, because you know the, the response it would have gotten, you, right? But, you know, yeah, you know, I mean, dude, you know how toxic that oh. WWE locker room was, brother. I mean, oh you know, it was, it was really just, especially during that time, I, I only wish that we could have experienced the camaraderie that I, it seems like there had been after that. Yeah. Like, it seems like it was such a better locker room yeah. and like, you know, being, and especially dude coming from OBW where like yeah. that's family. Yeah. And yeah. it was yeah. like, it was just like night and day. And, and even when I, after, when I went to ring of honor, it was the same thing. It was like just awesome people. And, and really just like a good chemistry with people. But um, so imagine that right there with the verbiage this day and age, how many lawsuits would be out of that, right? Oh, holy, oh, holy shit, man. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can do the hell. You couldn't get that. You couldn't get away with nearly that stuff now. You'd have but, the uh, LBGTQ community coming after yeah. you with picket signs. And, oh, holy my God. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, and um, and um, you know, the whole time he's getting all upset because they're like, "Why'd you do that?" Blah 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 blah, and they're coming after him, coming after him, and uh, and and like he's like, "I'm not gay, I'm not gay, I swear I'm not gay," and and like to the point where he started crying, he oh. he like literally started crying, and I I, I felt bad for the guy, you know, even though I, I there's so much of me that had some anger towards him for for different reasons, um, you know, with you know how our tag team was and and stuff, but. Um, but when it came down to it, it was, it wasn't right. And he started crying and they're still, but they're still messing with them. And they're like, here, Ted, Chad, Chad, calm down, calm down here. Do some jumping jacks. It'll make you feel better. So come on, come on, do some jumping jacks. So he's sitting there crying, doing jumping jacks. And, um, and I, he's like, I'm not gay. I'm not gay doing jumping jacks. And I felt bad. Um, wow. yeah. And like, you know, they're just, they're just really messing with them. And then so things calm down a little bit. Um, and they're so they're like, so Chad, tell me, what's up with you, with, with you guys? Uh, we hear that you guys, you know, you guys, uh, you know, I, we hear that you guys don't like each other. And he's like, he's like, no, 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 no. I didn't say that. Not. He's like, tank. He's like, what's the deal? I was like, I was like, look, I was like, you know, there's frustrations. Every team, every tag team goes through it sometimes. You know, we don't always see it eye to eye, but that's just the way it is. I was trying to just kind of brush it off as, 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 as best as possible. And, um, and they're like, so Chad, so Tank calls all the shots. Why do you let him do that? He's like, you should stand up to Tank. You need to stand up to Tank right now. Tell him, tell him how you feel. And so Chad's like, nah, 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 nah. and he's like, come on, come on, do it. So he's trying to get, they're trying to go to fight me, you know? So sure enough, they work him up enough to try and get him to fight me. And I'm sitting in my chair and he's like, I'm not going to fight him. And they're like, why? They're like, because, why? Because, why? Because my mom always told me to be the bigger man and don't be in a fight. And he go, and next thing I, I remember, I shit you not, they started throwing uh, napkins in the air like there's flags on the play. They're like, what the fuck, flag on the play? You don't bring your mother into this shit. What the, you gay motherfucking fag. Blah, 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 blah. Like bad, like, like, you know, bad. And he's like, I'm not gay. He just, she just told me to bigger, be a bigger man and walk away from the fight. 
and uh, and 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 Orlando's like Orlando, and you know Orlando. He's yeah. like, yeah, and and uh, you know he's he's not he's not you know he's very okay with with his sexuality and out pretty much you know right he's a, he is who he is All right, right. he goes yeah. he goes Chad if anyone knows gay I know gay and you're motherfucking gay right wow and, and, he said that and, wow yeah, yeah 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 and 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 he said that and and so of course that upset him more and then so they're just trying to get get him more and more. And uh, and you know, hey, look, I could see I could see why people would think that about Chad. You know, we you know, he has Metro, a little bit metrosexual. Of, yeah, very Metro. metrosexual. And yeah. hey, look, how, how many of us weren't? We were all everybody was. You had to be to be get along with Vince. <laughs> oh, right, exactly. Right? Shit, man. So like, you know, bottom line is is uh, you know, they they got to him to the point where he I know he didn't want to fight me. I know he didn't want to do anything. But like he was trying to act like he was going to, he's like, Tank, they're like, stand up to him. So he's like, Tank, from now on, I call equal shots in this game. And he goes, and they're like, come on, Chad, get him, get him, get him. And they're like, he's trying to get more and more. And so he's like, he's like, starts to do like, like, oh, oh, like he's like, almost like fire, like, like uh, old Hogan school fire, right? Was Chad drunk at this time? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they had been working on him, man. They had been, he, was, he was there before I got there. Like he, they'd already, I think he was already good to go. Right. right. And so, um, so sure enough, he's like, tank. He's like, mm, like he's trying to do this. Right. But like, and so now, but he's trying to position himself. So the boys can't see him. Right. Why he's doing like, oh, like he's going to punch me. Right. And he goes tank. And, and he's like, and he kind of, he, he kind of winks at me. He, I mean, I'm not kidding you. When I le legit say he winked at me, like, like, let's fate, let, let's, Dude, yeah, let's work yeah, boys. Let's work. Right. right, right. And he winked at me. And Bradshaw must have seen him. He goes, Did you just wink? Are you trying to are you trying to plan a fake fight? Are you trying to work the boys? He goes, that's what we do. And and he's like, he goes, he's no, 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 no. And and I was like, holy shit. They so they just got on him for that, right? And so I said, and this is part of what Chad missed. And I know exactly how the whole thing went with the bathroom. Um, story because I was I had I literally I think I had maybe one and a half drinks I was lucky enough to get away with not having drinks in me um, so at that point I was like hey and this is this has already been going on for two hours this whole thing so I said okay I said guys you mind if I just use the bathroom real quick like yeah no problem go ahead so I go to the bathroom I'm, I'm, I'm taking a piss and about 30 seconds, 30, 45 seconds after that, I'm just finishing up. Chad busts in and he's, and Chad, I love you. I'm saying this to you. I know you're going to watch this and I love you, but I remember this clear as day and it's not to hurt you. I'm just telling it how it was because it's part of the story and you don't have to be embarrassed because you're an awesome guy. I just want you to know that and I have no bad feelings towards you. Um, but he, it was a scary time when you're a little guy in the business, you know, you're just, you won the new fish, man. You're just, and you're just trying to fuck and swim, you know, you're trying not to drown. And, uh, you know, around all these people that you actually at one point had looked up to, you know? Um, so uh, it's, they always say like, don't meet your heroes. And that's true with some people, you know? So, but some, some, some are awesome. Hey, yes, some yes. Guys are awesome. So I can't, you know, some best people that I've met, I was happy that they were just as good and cool as what I thought they were. But anyway, um, so I'm getting ready to walk out. Chad busts in. He's like, Tank, Tank, you got to help me. You got to help me. Please, please, please help me get out of this. Help me get out of this. And I was like, Chad, I, I, I don't know what to do. What do I say? I don't know. I, I don't know how to help you. I'm sorry, Chad. I don't know what to do. And I said, I said, you got in and we got to figure out how to get it out. That's it. You got to figure it out. And I said, but I said, but don't put them over, man. Don't put it over their stuff. And then I walked out and he was in there for another minute. And as soon as I'm walking out, all the guys start walking in or almost all of them, almost all of them. And so they're in there and, and I, they said, okay, we're done for the night. We're done. So, and the elevators were right there. And so I was like, okay, so I'll just wait for everyone and we'll go we'll take the elevators and go back up, right? Because I didn't want to leave without getting official permission, right? Yeah. yeah. So I waited there, wait for everyone to come out, figure we'll all take the elevator up together. And so I'm waiting there and Chad comes out. 
Chad comes running out of the bathroom and he comes out and he's like, please, 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 please tank. And I, 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 I swear on, I swear, I swear on everything right now. He got on his hands and knees, looked up at me and begged me, tank, please, please let me hit you one time, please. And I said, Chad, I said, I, I can't let you hit me. If I hit, if you hit me and I don't hit you back, then I become the bitch. I said, then I'm going to be the bitch. I was like, I can't, I can't let you just hit me and not something happen. I was like, I can't. And, and, and I'm like, in the meantime, he's continuing to, 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 to beg and beg and beg. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, where are these guys? Sure enough, he had locked them in the freaking bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> he had locked them in the freaking bathroom. So there's and, like eight or nine guys locked in there, right? Yeah, you know, ch- champions, <laughs> man. Six world champions locked in the bathroom. Yeah, dude, yo, Taker was there. And I remember Taker telling the story the next day to some of the other guys I heard. And he goes, and 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 he's like, he's like, we're yeah, so we're going to the to open the door now. I open the door. It isn't open. <laughs> Little bastard locked us in. <laughs> <laughs> so he went. So get this shit. They all started fucking laughing that they right. that he got one over on him, right? right? So he went from down here, totally yeah. freaking buried, to like right. over like a motherfucker, right? right? Yeah. Over shit, right? Yeah. And then Orlando came and unlocked the door. Orlando was the one that unlocked the door. He wasn't in there. So Orlando unlocked the door. The boys came out and they saw him on his hands and knees begging me. Oh. Yeah. Yep. And, and is that when the guy had the, the one, two, where you knocked him out? Because no, you guys see, that's. That's the whole thing. This is a two-night event, man. Extraordinary oh. extravaganza. Crazy. Oh. Crazy. So, so, but it was the end of the night. And so we go, we, we get on the elevator and I'll, I'll never forget this because I, I was really scared for Chad. I felt like really worried about him because I remember we were in the elevator, a bunch of big guys and, and in the elevator and we were just standing there and they were just, you know, doing this kind of stuff to Chad, bumping him around like he's a, like a freaking pinball you know, and just, and he's like literally like crying, crying. And, um, you know, people get off at their floors and then we get off. Uh, I remember I was on a different floor than Chad, but I, I made sure I went to Chad's floor to walk him to his room because he was so upset. And um, I was really worried for his mental and physical health. Um, and I, I stayed with him for a real long time and he just cried and cried and cried. And I, I remember, I, I remember I hugged him and I tried and I, I was like, Hey man, just hang in there. You're going to be okay. And he's like, I don't understand why people, why, 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 why this happened? Why is this happening? He's like, I just try to be nice to everybody. And um, he's like, and I, and I was like, Chad, I was like, look, I was like, you know, we have, we don't see eye to eye all the time, but look, you, you have to listen to me. Just, don't put them over and don't give in to all the stuff that they do and just, just go with the flow. Just try and go with the flow, stay under the radar, you know, just try and stay under the radar. And that's, that's all you can really do. And so I, 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 fought, I stayed with him until I felt like, okay, he's not going to like, you know, do something stupid and hurt himself or something. Cause I really was worried about him like that. Um, he was that upset. And the next day, you know, the bus, he gets on the bus and everything goes down and, we do our thing and then we're, we're at the arena and this, you know, the, they have the, you know, the sheet and they say, who's wrestling who. And I guess, I think we were wrestling like uh, Brian Kendrick and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Paul London. And uh, it said, it said Paul London and Brian Kendrick versus a dick and a pussy. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. And so, uh, so that was, that was that. And, uh, so we got, went out there and I remember Steamboat was our agent. Um, and I remember every time I got in the ring and I'd wrestle, it'd be fine. But then as soon as I tagged in Chad, when Chad went in, you would hear a baby crying over the loudspeakers. 
at the arena. They, they would play a baby crying, wah, wah, while he was in there wrestling. Every time there's a tag, tag in, tag out, every time. And you could just hear the boys laughing. You just knew they were just, you know, it was a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so, so that was just that. And then uh, I know this is a long ass story, but this is how it happened. No, no, it's good to clarify. So, <clears throat> so that was the match. Then you had, you went back to the hotel. Is that where the, the part, the fight happened? Yeah. So, so, you know, we go back that night and I try to get, go, go right up to my room, get to bed, you know, <laughs> as I like, you know, screw, screw catering or anything like that, man. So, um, I'm laying in bed and it wasn't, didn't take long before I get a call and, uh, it's, it's Benoit and he's like, Hey, um, I'm going to come up and get you. Uh, we're going to go down to, uh, to catering. I'm like, all right. I'm like, here we go again. And I just thought it was going to be, be just the boys again. But dude, when I walked down there, this, uh, we're in another town now. And this was in a nice hotel. I can't even remember the hotel, but it was a real, it was a nice hotel crowded. It was a crowded hotel. And, uh, we're in this really big, beautiful catering room. And when I walk in, it was like, it was like, oh, like the whole roster, basically. It was wow. the, like, like freaking uh, cast and crew, <laughs> like everybody, like people I'd never seen before. Right. And I'm not kidding you. When there was, uh, as I'm walking in, I see there's like money on the tables. Like there's all these round tables and everyone's got money on the tables. And as I'm walking, I'm like, what the? And, and, and sure enough, there's one seat, one seat open. And of course, it's next to Taker, right? Once again. And so I'm like, all right. I'm like, great. What's going to happen now? And so the deal was they're trying to get me to fight him again. And I'm sitting there and I said, I said, Taker, can I have a beer? He's like, yeah, sure, here. So I, I'm drinking a beer. And Chad, you know, they already have him lit up. They're already, he's, he's probably, you know, nine, 10 sheets to the wind. And, uh, and, you know, they got him riled up and trying to pick up right back where we left off uh, the day before. And um, he's like, Tank, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna um, stand for this, blah, 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 blah. And oh, meanwhile, by the way, that money, that was all bets. Those were all uh -huh. bets. Those were all bets on the table. Was he gonna whoop my ass? Was I gonna whoop his ass? Uh, was he gonna cry? Like there was all kinds of bets going on, but basically was I gonna whoop him or whatever? So, um, so they got him riled up. I'm sitting in a chair. I'm literally just sitting back in a chair, just having a beer. And uh, and Chad's doing his thing. And I'm like, Chad, I don't want to fight you. I'm not gonna fight you. I'm not gonna fight you. Chad, please sit down. I don't want to fight you. And uh, and he's like, Tank, I'm not gonna stand for this. I'm not gonna stand for this. And I'm like, Chad, please sit down. Please sit down. And I'm like, and now I'm like leaning back. I'm like, you know how you lean back on two legs of chair? I'm having a drink. And, and I didn't know he was going to do it. And sure as shit, he hit me. He hit me. He hit me. He went, wham, he hit me. I flew back off my chair backwards, right? I, 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 yeah, he hit me. Like, and, and I heard his, his version of it. But no, he hit me. He hit me hard enough to knock me off the back of the chair and, and, and do a back roll. Right. And next thing I know, he's got me in a front face lock. Right. Oh. He's got me in front face lock. And I'm like, and I know he's drunk as shit, but I'm like, but I said, I got, I said, damn it, Chad. I said, now I got to freaking hit you. Right. Like why I'm in it. And so like, you know, I, I, I get out of it. And as soon as, as soon as he does that, I, I just, I went, bam. I didn't, I didn't hit him with the closed fist. I smacked the shit out of his face. And he went like that. And then I said, I said, I'm not going to fuck off. I'm not going to lose my job because you're stupid shit. Right, 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 right. And, and so, and I was a little heated at that time, but I knew that the boys were going to be getting what they wanted yeah. Yeah. If, if I got, if I went, right? Yeah. So I was like, you know, I'm not going to, so, so I was like, I was, I was like that. I was like, I was like, no, knock the hell off. And then I just went, oh, by the way, it was in the middle of, um, of Bradshaw saying something to me, which he was on the other side of Undertaker. And uh, so I was like, now knock the hell off. And I just looked at him and I'm like, I'm sorry, what were you saying? And like, like nothing happened. And because I was just trying to diffuse the situation, right? right. But 
everybody just lost it. They're like, they just started laughing. They're like, ah, Chad, Chad, you fucking hit Tanky and he fucking gets it right up and smacks you right back in the face like the bitch you are. He's like, and then he acts like nothing happened. It's like, Chad, you fucking bitch. You know, that kind of stuff. So and, was and Chad knocked out from the slap or was he? Oh, no, no, no. There's, there's just this much more. We're almost Okay. Done. Damn. <laughs> yeah. So, so, um, so, 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 so Bradshaw, Bradshaw was like, um, <laughs> oh, dang, well, I got to tell you, oh, that's funny as shit. Oh, 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 oh here, here's a toast. And so he's going to toast me. And I'm just like, I was like, sorry. I was like, uh, Chad knocked the beer out of my hand. And Taker's like, here, take mine. And so I was like, uh, okay, Mr. Taker. You know, so I'm, I'm, so I'm like, all right, so I'm leaning over, like, I'm going to go and, uh, toast Brad Shaw, so I'm just going to let that happen. And then hopefully that's it. Right. Yeah. So as I'm going to do this, I, out the corner of my eye, I see Chad, like g- getting ready to wheel off. Right. Oh. And, and I, and I said, and I, I stopped and I went, Whoa. And he saw me, he saw me like, like, yo, what, what's up? And he goes, he goes, psych. Like, like as if he was kidding, as if he wasn't really going to hit me. Okay. And look, I know he was drunk as hell, so he's just thinking, what can I say at this moment? Whatever. Yeah. And and he said, psych. I said, psych. And then I just I shook my head. And as I went to toast him, as I went to toast Bradshaw, wham! He clocked wow. me. <laughs> right in, wow. He clocked me right in the face. I stumbled back. I stumbled back. I said, I said, and I said, now I'm gonna have to beat your fucking ass. Right. And he started doing his be- best Ric Flair begging off. Okay. Like, yeah, time out, time out. I right. said, I said, no, I, and and so that was that. And then I just came in and I just I, I you know at that point it's lost. I said, I just and I just I just saw like, wop, wop, wop. And I, I remember the first shot, first shot I busted his nose open, second oh. shot I popped him right in the eye, and then the third shot. I hit him in his lip, his bottom lip, and it knocked his teeth right through his bottom lip. Holy shit! Yeah, knocked Fuck his teeth up. right, through, yeah, right through his bottom lip, and uh, it actually uh, cut my cut my pinky right down to the bone. Oh, his teeth, shit. his teeth sliced me right down to the bone, and like so now I'm on top of him, and 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 I just remember, and they they pull me off of him. And, you know, I didn't do anything more to him, but they pulled me off of him. And there he is in like a w- nice white shirt, just covered in blood, off of like just snoring basically because he's, he's, he just got hit, tagged. And I, 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 man, I felt bad. But at the time, I was just, you know, whatever. You saw um, red, right? You just lost your job. Yeah, right? yeah, right. Because I was like, I was just like, damn it. And so I remember like a couple of, the, I, I think it was like, uh, uh, a couple of the guys picked him up and 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 they're like, get this fucker back to his room. Take this guy. Get him the fuck out of here. Blah 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 blah. Get him back to his room. This piece of shit, you know. And and he was out of it anyway. And so they they're like basically dragging him back to his room, and just I guess just in a bloody mess through the, through the lobby and everything. <laughs> like a busy hotel, nice hotel. Yeah. And I just remember, just I mean, and then. I was so full of adrenaline at the time that I, I mean, I didn't even notice. And I looked down and my, I could just see like the bone and my skin ripped wide open. And uh, Dr. Rio, so I think it was Dr. Rio. So if, if, uh, it was yeah. the doctor yeah. at the time. And yeah. he's like, yeah. he's like, yeah, this is why I was here. I had a feeling this was going to happen. And he goes, all right, let me see. And so he looked at it and, and I, I, I broke my, I got a boxer fracture and uh, tore my ligament. Right. Oh, wow. So it was wide open. And and so he looks at it, he goes, Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you you tore you tore your ligament and uh where your yeah, your ligament and uh and yet you got a fracture probably. He goes, so he goes, okay, guys, and all the guys are in the middle. He goes, All right, guys, uh, who wants to see me repair a tendon <laughs> or <a> ligament? <laughs> right there, right. Right and there. So, yeah. Right. And the guys are like, and the guys are like, Yeah, I do. I'm like, shit, man. And and um and and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. I was scared as shit because I was scared that that needle was gonna hurt me when he when he numbed me up. 
Right. I was like, okay. I was like, shit, please don't be a big pussy and have this needle hurt me and me say ow because <laughs> yeah. So so he go went and put the Novocaine in and he st- and they're they're literally like right on top of me watching him repair the tendon while they and stitch me up. Yeah. So uh yeah. so they did that and then and then uh they're like look they're like and and I remember I, I remember it was it was like Brad Sean Thaker and 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 they're like look you're cool with us you're one of us now you're cool we're good you're good with us you're cool he goes but your fucking partner he's an asshole and um and that was that and that was and 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 so there wasn't much to it after that because we got let go like about a month after um and uh and you know it it, it was what it was but the next day you know the deal they didn't even let chad ride in the bus they made him ride in a cab and uh and on the ride to the airport, and they, when he got out, he he had fucking puked all in the cab, and so uh, yeah, he got. I think, and I think Bradshaw, I think ended up paying for for the cab or something like that. And they didn't let him do shit, and they really treated him like a like trash. It was bad. Um, I'm not saying it was Bradshaw personally because I don't know what they had going on between each other. And Bradshaw, actually, I'll be honest, other than just the minor you know, hazing that everyone does. I mean, Bradshaw actually um, never gave me that much of a personal problem. Like he never was coming at me like real hard himself. Um, And that was probably because, you know, he was doing his gimmick with Jillian and Jillian and I were together at the time. Right, right. So he was, yeah, so he never really gave me any, but still, I mean, in a roundabout way, it still became a problem because, Chad's problem ended up being my problem because it all led up to a whole thing. So yeah, so you, so you were cool with them, but a month later you're out of a job. Pretty much. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But yeah, but I, I think you know, I think that you know, I don't think I don't think Randy liked me though, to be quite honest. <laughs> really? Yeah, you know, it's funny, and I think it stems back to um, he was doing OV, uh, doing a, a, a Six Flags show, and um, Danny. Danny was. Danny said, "Hey, can you go and uh, uh, tell uh, Randy I want to see him?" And he was in one. You know, had, we had a couple trailers and stuff. And and so I was like, "Yeah, yeah, no problem, Danny." So I went in there and I was like, "Hey, Rand." I was like, "Hey, Randy." I was like, uh, "Danny said he wants to see it." That's all I said to him. He talked. He. I think he took that as I was trying to give him orders or something like that. From what I understand. Now, what year is this? This is like probably 2005 or 2004. Oh, 2004 Randy, I know his fucking ego was just out of control, man. Yeah, yeah. I heard hey, he's look, changed, but during those years, shoof. hey, man, you know, you know, it is what it is. You know, I always, I never held animosity towards anyone. I just wanted to just, I just wanted to go and do what I loved doing, which was wrestling. That was it, yeah. you know. So, yeah. but I will say that I, I remember the first time I met you. Um, you know, you were doing your thing. You're so young, but like freaking in phenomenal shake. And I was like, damn, who's this dude, man? He's, he's uh, freaking ridic- ridiculous. Had, yeah, so he's, I remember, a, he's a dick. No, no, no. I dick. I remember the dicks. <laughs> Not a dick. Rid I should have been the dick. I <laughs> yeah, <been> you, <laughs> you, you probably would have done a hell of a lot better and gotten over. No, but no. Uh, but yeah, but um, but yeah, yeah, I just I remember I remember you were you were you and some of the other guys were just really you never, you guys were always good, good people towards me. And I, I never had a problem with anyone. Uh, and I just appreciate everything that, you know, you guys have, you know, the way you guys treated uh, new people like myself when we came in, because you didn't give us a hard time. You know, at the same time, you know, we realized that, you know, you guys were the vets and we were just coming in. So we'd give up our chairs and do what we had to do to, oh, to make sure that we showed our respect. But, but you guys, you guys treated us well in OVW, and I, I just want to say I appreciate everything, like stuff that, like, you know, you and Conway and and uh, Dinsmore and Basham and, and uh, you know, all those guys, you know, all those guys that were like, you know, up there when I was just coming in. Uh, I appreciate everything you guys did. Thank you. So now no. the wrestling game is done for you or? I do small shows here and there, you know, um, Took a little time off, uh, you know. I got a I got a 21 month old, so you know, just enjoying, enjoying. Thanks, man. I'm just enjoying being a dad right now. Uh, I was just doing a lot of local stuff, uh, not going too far out of the area, but uh, but you know, I, I might do some more stuff coming up, coming down the road. Just it's you know, it's hard. It's hard when you enjoy it, you know. 
you know, just you got that bug. You just want to go out there and entertain and, and just have some fun. That bug, man, is the most addicting drug in the world, isn't it? Yeah, oh, man, I, it, it is. Yeah, I've never been, I've never really been an addict of anything, but I never got into gimmicks or anything like that. But, but, but wrestling is one of the things. Being an entertainer and just having fun, going out there and just that's that's probably pretty much my drug, you know, just entertaining. So, yeah, yeah, man. Well, man, I'm so glad you're doing well. Congratulations on the baby. Thanks for clearing up that story because, you know, there's always three sides. Of One course. guy is the other guy is in the truth. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And, hey, look, Chad's version can be Chad's version, and that's that's cool. And, and uh, I, you know, I got no bad feelings towards Chad. So, right. but, uh, uh, you know, and to be quite honest, I, I really don't have bad feelings towards anyone. I mean, I've had my time of, being pissed off about how things turned out and the way we got released and all that shit and and uh being pissed off at the world and you know why that have to go down that way that that, that bullshit but life goes on man life goes yeah. on you know that's it you know some guys some guys never let go of that resentment and it leads them yeah. right to their grave you know yeah absolutely hey i'm not saying every once in a while it doesn't eat me up when i turn on tv and i I see a couple guys out there. I'm like, damn, I wish I could be doing that right now, yeah. you know? Yeah. But, uh, hey, but it is what it is. And uh, I also wish I was 6'5", because it probably would have been a hell of a lot different if I was 6'5 <laughs> with my build. But right. What right. do you want to do? <laughs> it is when's, what it is. Yeah. When's the last time you and Chad spoke? Uh, you know, it, it's been, I can't even tell you. It's been years. Um, I think he friended me on Facebook like, maybe like a couple of years ago. Um, and I, I accepted a request, but like, he's, he's so MIA sometimes and I'm horrible on social media anyway, but like, you know, I'd have no problem talking to Chad and saying, Hey man, I wish you all the best. Uh, Cause I know, I know deep down, he, he's not a bad person. He has a good heart. He means well, he's just a very different person. Yeah. And, uh, and Hey, that's cool. We're all different. So just yeah, he yeah. just we just we just were you know gasoline and freaking you know gasoline and what's the other one that would go with that that would light it on fire gasoline in a match or gasoline and whatever you know we just did oil and vinegar oil and water we didn't mix oil and water. So, yeah yeah, yeah his, his personality <laughs> did not fit that locker room at all you know what I mean? unfortunately I'm saying he's a bad person but it's just right that competitive toxic masculinity right 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 yeah. he wanted it bad enough i mean he wanted it just as bad as anyone yeah and he worked hard for it it's yeah. just but like you definitely have to have a certain mentality you got to have certain type of thick skin you know yeah. you got to be alligator thick man and uh you, you just got to let shit roll off your back you know you can't you can't let stuff bother you you can't you just got to let shit go and that's it man if you don't you'll get eaten alive and that's proof right there was in the pudding so yeah yeah it was a big well, game to play so yeah man. well brother i'm so glad that you're doing well it was good to catch up with you and maybe Absolutely. uh maybe somewhere down the line we'll have a face off you and chat again <laughs> that'd be great man no no I, I appreciate thank you for having me on i, I saw chat was on i was like hey man let's uh let's get both sides to, to this and and just uh really tell an entertaining story so but uh, but thanks so much for having me on. I'm glad to see you're doing well, and thank you so much, James, as well. Thanks for having me on, and uh, it's been before, a pleasure before, and an honor. Before we finish, uh, do you yeah. want to give people your details where they can find you? Any promoters? Yeah, you, or can anything? Just, you can just hit me up on uh, Facebook. Uh, you can um, you know just tank tolling on Facebook. Uh, you could. I also have, own um, Apex Custom Apparel. I do custom. Uh, custom apparel screen printer and all that stuff so i do them for gyms and restaurants and bars and businesses and wrestlers and all that other stuff so yeah i make gear and all that stuff so yeah but that's okay, pretty well, much it I hit you up for uh for some new tights bro hey man well i don't do tights i just do screen printing <laughs> okay well <laughs> after i do episode. like merch i do merch yeah i do merch. okay yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but anyway, no, but thanks for having me on, guys. It's a great pleasure, and uh, I'm just glad to see you guys are doing well. So awesome, thank you bro. for everything. Be safe. God bless. Talk soon, okay? Sounds good, man. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.